What's up guys, it's Franklin Manol here and in this video today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a step-by-step -step strategy that you can use to make $3,000 monthly from Upwork. Now, Upwork is basically a freelancing site where you go on and you know sell your skills, sell your services and you get paid for it in dollars. And this is currently one that is available to a whole lot of Nigerians right now. And with the current state of things in our economy today, it is quite cool and it's almost important for you to, you know, start figuring out different ways to make money. And one of the best ways to do that is being a freelancer. Now, a freelancer is basically someone that doesn't work with any company and all you do is to work on contract jobs, right? You work on contract jobs and you get paid for them. And even when you're working on this contract job, another cool way to do this is by working with guys that can actually pay you in dollars. Basically, you know that when you actually get paid in dollars, you are actually going to be on the big side, right? And this is what Upwork allows for you to do. And inside of Upwork, you are actually going to be able to connect with as many people as you can all around the world. And you are working for people in the US, in the UK, in Canada and all, right from your home here in Nigeria, right? And you get paid in dollars. Now, this is actually the very cool part. And the thing here is there are a lot of Nigerians currently that are actually not feeling this economic shift because basically they're actually working as freelancers on these sites and they're making cool money for themselves. Now, on this channel, basically what I do is to share with you guys tips and strategies on how to make money online. And today, I'm still going to be doing the same thing, sharing with you guys how to make up to $3,000 on a monthly basis from Upwork. And in order to do this, I actually have here with me, you know, I'm a young lady that has actually, you know, done this for herself severally and she's super successful in this particular space. Now, I actually don't want to waste too much of time with, you know, sharing with you guys what Upwork is and who Upwork is for. But basically, this is one that you really need to sit and watch till the very end. If you're looking to start working from home and also earn in dollar just by using your internet access and your laptop, then this video is one you want to watch. And at the same time, if you know about Upwork already and you've been having a series of issues with Upwork, this video is more of like a free course that will basically guide you on the step-by-step -step things you need to do in order to start getting super gigs and making cool cash for yourself. So make sure that you actually stay all through this video and watch it to the very end. And at the same time, I'm going to be leaving every link that you actually need to get started right down there in the description so that as you're watching through this video, you can also go ahead and use the links I have there to connect to wherever you actually want to connect to. But guys, before we go ahead, just take five seconds of your time and go ahead and drop in the comment section. Just type in that right there, Upwork. Go ahead and comment Upwork right now in the comment section. Yeah, let us actually trigger the YouTube algorithm so that they know we're talking about Upwork and we can get this video to more more persons that really want to see this video because this video is what I'm going to recommend to every Nigerian right now. So go ahead and drop in the comment section, drop in there Upwork. Yeah, and if you've done that, give this video a thumbs up right now and also subscribe to this channel so that you do not miss any of my videos. Videos. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Hi guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day you are joining us, you're welcome. My name is Uzamako Kafo and I'll be taking you guys on this class that I've titled Upwork Hack Strategy. If you're in this class or if you're watching this video, I want to assume that you already know what Upwork is about. But for benefit of doubt, for those who may have jumped on this video out of curiosity, I'll just take out a few seconds to explain or tell you what Upwork is about. Now, Upwork is a platform. Think of it as a job board. Mm? You're probably used to Jobberman, Indeed, or um, all these other platforms where they post jobs on. That's just what Upwork is like. But with a little difference, definitely. Now, Upwork is a platform that lets freelancers connect with clients and vice versa that also let clients connect with freelancers now you get jobs by clients post the jobs on the platform freelancers who are also on that platform and have registered their services or, or their skills get to see these jobs and um if it's something they feel they're qualified for they apply for it so that's just how this platform works now as simple as it sounds it gets um a bit messy or a bit frustrating for some freelancers because definitely you're not the only freelancer who sees a job when it is posted there are so many other freelancers on the platform for the same reason as you are there to make money to work and make money and there are so many people who also see the same jobs that you see and who are also qualified as you are for the job do you get so this is why i come in 
to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to get your first or your next client on Upwork even as a newbie freelancer by newbie freelancer I mean even if you've probably not been hired elsewhere before so I'm here to help you demystify the whole oh it's very hard to get jobs on Upwork this one that one yes so this class is for you if you want to earn in dollars dear brethren if you're in Nigeria or most African countries you'd agree with me that earning in dollars is a big deal especially considering the economic situation we are in and every other factor puts in place because for example right now in Nigeria um, a dollar is about 490 naira to one dollar yes so you can imagine if you're making like hundred dollars two hundred dollars one thousand dollars two thousand dollars in a month on upwork you definitely be doing something for yourself so if that is your goal if that is what you like if an extra two thousand or one thousand dollars would make sense to you just stick to this video this class is also for you if you want to connect with foreign clients who are willing to pay you better because they understand the value that you bring i don't mean to shade to nigerian clients but almost if you work with Nigerian clients and you work with foreign clients, I don't think you ever want to work with Nigerian clients again. Because, mainly because um, foreign clients understand the value that you're bringing. Nigerian clients, I don't know if they don't understand it, or they don't want to understand, or they want to pretend they don't understand so that um, they can decide to under, underpay you or tell you they pay you with exposure. So if you want to connect with foreign clients who will pay you better because you understand the value of your skills, this class is for you. If you have a skill which can trade on Upwork. Now, I explained that Upwork is... Okay, Upwork is like a marketplace. Mm? And every market deals on demand and supply. So as a client, as a freelancer rather, you should have a skill which you are supplying. You're not just on the platform for vibes or you're not just on the platform just to be there. You have to have a skill or a service you are selling. So if you have a skill... Then definitely this class is not, is for you. If you don't have a skill yet or a service, you can still watch through to the end. But just make sure you ha keep in mind that you have to have a skill or a service before you can make money on Upwork. If you've been on Upwork where you had to land your first client, or you've even gotten your first client and it's been hard for you to get another client, this class is definitely for you. Now before we get started, let me tell you why you should pay keen attention to everything I'll discuss in this presentation. Now understand that you probably watched um, so many other videos or listened to so many other talks or read so many other blogs and from observation, most people just discuss these things out of theoretically, do you get? They probably stand up for one other class where they discuss it and um, we know how info, how the information um, industry is now. People could just sign up for a class, go and tap materials. And jump on another class teach the same thing so some people just teach theory you get they don't teach practical but i stand out in this case because things I've, i'll be teaching you are things that have helped me i've been in your shoes before let me tell you i've jumped on upwork got in my first client and it was hard for me to get another client and i was like what's going on blah 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 so then i had to like ask for help sign up for mentorship classes and all that before i was able to okay figure out that this is what i'm doing wrong and i'll be discussing some of those things that i discovered that i was doing wrong that I eventually fixed and help and instead of helping me get clients so now for over 15 months i've been helping freelancers get clients on upwork even you be freelancers even if they're just new at freelancing and i've never been hired elsewhere before and you don't have to take my word for it darlings i understand so many people say so many things just to get your money or to get your attention or to get whatever I know so I'll be sharing some of the testimonies I have received from my students and there are so many I can't even share everything but you can also check me out on Facebook um the Kafo Zamaka is my name on Facebook or Kafo Zamaka Mary Joy is my name on Facebook so the strategies that I teach are things that worked for me and things that worked for my students so no I'm not here to sell snake oil to you or whatever. But disclaimer, before I proceed, things you learn, I would like you to understand that Upwork is not a get-rich-quick scheme. Do you get? Because I know people 
you've seen you probably seen people or heard testimonies of people that are making like three thousand dollars a month on upwork five thousand dollars a month on upwork they didn't just jump to that level and it's the same with not just upwork but with every other platform but let me just discuss it because i've observed that so many people come in with that whole mindset of um okay once i jump on upwork i just start seeing money shop shaba i just start like making my first million or two million or whatever it doesn't work that way you get so you should understand that this is not a get rich quick scheme it involves building it involves patience it involves consistency it's, you need to be optimistic and never that thing positive so the first so uh, these are some testimonies from my students you see faith says finally many thanks to zamaka finally because before my class he's been trying to like get gigs on upwork but it wasn't working for him it wasn't something's wrong before I took my class another person said Uza, I just landed my first job the next other person Esther she says um she goes on and on say so many things about mindset and every other thing and these are some of the things I discuss in my class mindset break demystifying so many things and every other thing so let's get started let's just get into the video in this presentation I'll be discussing two things I've noticed are responsible for most freelancers low hire rates profile and proposal these two things these two things i don't even know how to emphasize on it but your profile on upwork is like your cv mm? you know when you when you hire for when you're applying for um normal jobs you you take your cv you write your education work history every other thing that is what your profile on upwork is and it is a place where you have the opportunity of selling yourself. This is the opportunity to... Every freelancer has the same opportunity of writing things on their profile. But what you write is what makes you stand out. I, I compare profiles to like dollar bills. Mm? You have $1 and $100. Same bill, same paper, same ink. Same quality of paper used in printing it. Same quality of ink used in printing it. But what you write... On the paper, what you write on your profile is what determines if you're a hundred dollar free, uh, freelancer or if you're a one dollar freelancer. Do you get? So your profile is really important. Your proposal is really important. People may pay more emphasis to the proposal section or to proposals, which is also definitely your proposals are important. Don't get me wrong; they're really important. But people pay more attention to the proposals and forget that sometimes. There could be like two or three other freelancers with excellent proposals. So how do you stand out? And now the thing with freelancing on platforms like this, or generally, is that you should always find ways to set yourself apart. You get, you should always find ways to market yourself, to always be the preferred candidate. So every opportunity you have, your, pro your profile section, your proposal, every other thing, you really, really need to optimize it to get the best of it so let's get into your profile now your profile has i think about 10 sections you have your picture your education work history this one that one but i'll be discussing just four sections in this video and those four sections are your picture your portfolio your title and your overview now in choosing a profile picture I, I already wrote some steps here. I said something as simple as your profile picture can influence your potential client's decision. And this is so true. I've even observed it too. Sometimes I if people send me a message, I know I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'll probably um respond faster to somebody who is smiling on the person's profile picture. I've caught myself doing this in, like um three or four times and I'm like heck <laughs> this is psychology or something but i would advise that your prop your profile picture should be professional and you should try and smile in your picture it's not a passport it's not them um, it's not a passport do you guess this is somewhere you get to showcase your face and i also advise have a plain background not have a very busy background where people could be passing or trees or clothes or anything just have a very professional looking picture and with a plain background you don't have to go to the studio for this you get this is something you can use your phone to snap and there's this um okay i've already it here you can change the background of your picture so for example you've snapped a a 
beautiful picture that you feel in future if you like oh this would make a good proposal and profile picture but your background is busy you could just use this you could just visit um pfpmaker.com and change the background of your picture there so i showed you two examples now in the picture on the left my background is busy i have a chair i have so many things going on my on my background this is even really professional um lips closed and every other thing but the other picture is professional i'm smiling my background is plain so if i were to choose between these two pictures for my profile i'll go with the one on the right so the next thing we'll be discussing is your portfolio now your portfolio is where you get to share samples of your previous works hmm? previous works related to the service or the skill that you are selling on or work you get so let's say you are you write and you write ebooks for people so your pro your portfolio section is where you get to um, have a blurb like showcase samples of ebooks you've written in the past, maybe a link to the book or whatever. But make sure make sure if you have go treating these books for somebody else, and you ha you people have um, signed the non disclosure agreement, you don't post there. Do you get if you don't have if you don't have samples of works you have written in the past for somebody. You should learn to create samples. So, for example, when I started writing, I was just writing generically. But when I said um, I knew I would want to write or um, have a niche in the health and beauty industry. So, I wrote a few topics. Do you get? I googled for a few topics that were in that industry, and I wrote for um, wrote on them. So, in future, when I when I was going through job posts, and I saw a job that I felt okay, I want to write this job, or I want them to take on this job. All I did was link back to the other post that I had written in the past. I sent it as a sample, as my work sample, do you get? And I also have it on my portfolio section, and this is a sample of what I have written. So when you're so when you're starting out as a freelancer, I understand that you may not have samples or you may not have previous clients, do you get? The beauty, what you should do at this point is Create relevant samples. By relevant samples, I mean samples works related to the services you want to offer on a book or skills you want to offer on a book. Do you get that way? It helps you. And the importance of your portfolio or having previous work experiences, you'd see it when you're writing your proposal. You get because it's easier to convince the client that I, I can do this job for you because I have done it in the past for somebody else. Now to tell a client because I've done it in the past. I can tell the client, I can do this job for you. But you don't have any proof that you can actually do the job because you've not done it before. And the clients will feel, okay, is it my work, you, my um, contract or my project you want to use and learn work? Do you get? And you should understand that there are other freelancers there who are also bidding for the same job as you. So having work samples is going to be it's really important in giving you an edge over getting the job you want to get. Next thing we're looking at is the title. The title. The title. Now, SEO. The whole SEO is called search engine opt um, optimization. For those of us who may not know what SEO is, SEO applies on Upwork too. And the hack for SEO is in choosing keywords. Now, keywords are words that people searching for your service or your products or your organization or whatever would use when searching for it do you get so let's say you're a content writer if someone is looking for a content writer definitely the person is going to search for content writer so and the thing is that sometimes people do not um there's something called getting invites on upwork mm? so sometimes people do not may not post the jobs directly on the platform they could just go through google and maybe type something like um content writers on upwork do you get or blog writers on upwork or article writers on upwork if your title and your overview is optimized for those terms your profile there's a high probability that your profile will pop up do you get so when you're writing your title don't just write anything that's in your mind you have to be intentional about your title so i said to make your profile search engine optimized your title should have the keywords your clients 
would use while searching for your for your service and i went on to give examples i said for example if you're a content writer your title can read creative content writer it writes for health and beauty industry so let's say you you have niched to health and beauty sector okay i think i'll take out a few seconds to talk about niching too after this slide so if you have niched to let me say health and beauty industry your title can read expert health and beauty content writer so let me just take a few i do not plan on talking about niching but it becomes important as we go on niching is choosing to serve a particular group of people do you get and the importance of niching is that it sets you out as an expert so for example you have to pick eh? would you rather just go to a general doctor or you'd go to a dentist I would assume you go to a dentist if you have toothache. And the thing is, if you went to a general hospital, number one, they will not even take care of you very well in the first place. Do you get? But even if you went there, they will charge you less because they are not specialists. Most times they actually refer you to a dentist. But let me just imagine that you go to a general hospital where they decide to take care of you. They will not charge you as much as a dentist will charge you. I went to the dentist once and just pick a card. I paid 5k. They had not even touched me or anything or opened my mouth. I already paid 5k. But I'm sure if I went to general hospital, I may not pay as much as that for just um, consultation or picking a card or something like that. So the thing with picking a niche is that it sets you out as an expert. Now, you're probably new to what you're doing. That there are two ways you can niche, or three ways actually. There are three ways you can niche. You can niche according to industry, you can niche according to service, you can niche according to both industry and service. So, for example, I'm a health and beauty writer. I also do lifestyle, but let's just stick to health and beauty. I'm a health and beauty writer. Mm? That is industry. What do I write? The different things you can write. You have article writing, blog writing, listicles, case study, white papers product reviews, product descriptions, blah, blah, blah. That's a service. Mm? So you can also decide to niche just on service. So the, if you niche according to only service, what this means is that you be, you, you could decide to be writing articles, blog posts, this one, that one, for any industry you get. You can also niche according to and if you choose to write for, you can also niche according to both health and industry. So what this, sorry, both um, industry and service. So what this means now is that I could say I'm a health and beauty article writer. Or I'm a health and beauty blog post writer. Now I have niche according to both industry and service. So I'll discuss for writing. There are so many other services you can offer. You can be a graphic designer. You can be this one. You can be that one. And then for people who do like book publishing, they could tell you they are um, Amazon, Kindle, Amazon, Kindle, um, EPUB this one i don't really know those terms in publishing sure but those are you can niche according to industry you can niche according to service and the beautiful thing about this is that specialization specialization marks you out as an expert and you get more money when people recognize you as an expert than when people recognize you as a jack of all trade so back to what we're discussing next thing we'll be discussing is your overview the overview section is this is where you get to sell yourself scatter your overview is your overview should answer the questions what do i do who do i do it for what qualifies me to do it and what results the client gets by hiring me then you should definitely end with a cta cta means a call to action now let me answer each question one by one now in your overview mm, it should state the services you offer. So this is where you talk about what do I do. And now remember, I just discussed um, niching. And I told you guys, like, for example, as a writer, you could maybe do, be doing case studies, white paper, product descriptions, blah, blah, blah. Your overview should be able to answer this question even before the client maybe reaches out to you. Do you get? So your overview should be able to tell the clients, oh, I do case studies, so I do white papers, so I do product descriptions. I write this one, I write that one. Do you get? Then... It should answer who do I do it for? As a writer, who do you write for? Are you writing for like B2B, B2C? Are you writing for health and beauty brands, tech brands, financial brands, X, whatever it is, who do you do it for? Do you get 13 um, results is what do you get by hiring me? You have to be specific. Now your overview is a pitch, is where you get to pitch yourself. Is a copy. 
you get if you know what copywriting is copywriting is selling yourself selling your services selling your products using words so that is what your overview does for you so there are so many other freelancers with your skill set so what guarantee are you giving your clients or your potential clients are you guaranteeing them that your write-up would increase their sales or improve conversions for them or you write engaging articles so what exactly is your what specifically are you guaranteeing them that they'll get by hiring you now what qualifies you for this job you're doing is it education is it experience is it certification you talk about it do you get and it's important to mention this because you don't want to sound like um someone will make so many promises so you should be able to specify this is what i do this is what i do it for this is one guarantee um what what qualifies me to do it for example you see someone that is a doctor and the person did not go to school or the person did not go to medical school or something and the person is not an anti doctor the person is a medical doctor what qualifies you to become a medical doctor in the first place you will not feel safe in the person's hands you get so it's just the same thing you should also do handle objections what your clients may have if you say um you write let them um, sales letters that, that that's guaranteed to maybe raking millions for them anybody can make this promise but you can stand up by telling them that perhaps you have the experience you've been a copywriter for xyz years or you've been a marketing and sales um, person for xyz years you've done this one you've done that one you can even give them case studies of of uh, previous work you've done in the past that helped you to get the results you want so what i'm just saying is your overview should just answer the question what qualifies you to do it is it your education were you schooled in this is your experience you have certifications in this so basically so i i did a mini overview here and i said let's put it all together so let's say your title is expert health and beauty content writer your overview can read something like this definitely your overview should be longer than this but it shouldn't be too long ago but it should be longer than this i just wrote this to help you put things in perspective so i said are you looking for creatively written website content that delights customers and converts leads to long-term clients now take note of text that not in white here do you get so delights customers and converts leads to long-term clients is what will i do is the result you will get I mean, they're literally telling the results you get that out with um, the website content I write. So what am I doing? I'm writing website content. Mm? What will the website content do to delight customers and convert leads to long-term clients? And I say I'm here to help you write them. And I go and had to say my name, and I tell you I'm a dynamic content writer. So this is me telling you who I am. So I specialize in creating educative, engaging, and compelling content for businesses in the health and beauty industry. So I also tell you who I write for. Do you get what am I doing this for? Health and beauty industry. And I perform superbly at writing, landing page content, product descriptions, mission statement, product reviews, blah, blah, blah. This is still me telling you more of what I do. So I go on ahead to also tell you what qualifies me to do it. I say I am a certified, as a certified Hobbswell Academy inbound marketer. I can help you handle your inbound marketing strategy needs with high quality writing solutions. So I just go on and on. So this is me answering the question, what qualifies me to do it? Do you get? And I tell you, let me apply my skills and experience. I also tell you that what qualifies me is my skills and experience from over three years of writing. So the point of also um, taking the pain of stress of writing this overview is to let you understand that your answering these four questions doesn't even have to be so lengthy. So I'll, I'll, I don't want to imagine that you think, okay, your overview should become like a normal lecture speech or something like that. Your overview should be concise. It should be clear. It should just answer this for, it should definitely answer these four questions. Then you, you should end with a CTA. CTA is called action. So it could be maybe hit the invite button now or contact me or whatever the next step you want them to take is. Now, to the almighty proposal writing. Proposal writing is... Meanwhile, I hope you guys have been getting me. I know this is not a real class, but I just hope um, you've gotten what I said so far. If you have any questions, you drop them in the comment section. 
and i'll definitely be going through the comment section with time to answer whatever questions you may have now your proposal writing this is the section you get to answer two main questions are you capable of handling the project and do you care about making the client's life easier do you get now the thing i've noticed about most most proposals that i've read from um my students or people who sign up for my class is that people write selfish proposals you get selfish proposals and proposals that let me just leave that selfish let me not go further but by selfish proposal i mean a proposal that is centered on you as a freelancer so um I c I've read proposals that are more like even in the proposals, proposals that are like please give me this job, please I really need it, I need the money. Like fine you need the money, but I mean give me a reason to give you my money. Even me I want to give you my money as a client, eh? Because I also need to get this problem off my back. So the thing about that's why I started this video by telling you you have to have a skill or a service sell on upwork so that you don't jump on upwork and you're seeing jobs and you're begging clients to please give you their money you get i've also seen proposals that are um, selfish in the sense of so many eyes so many eyes like you read the job description you don't even let the clients know that oh i've read your job description no i understand what you want to all this one or all that one you get just really selfish proposals that are just bricks of eye I like first person pronoun that's what I mean of by I now your proposal your proposal the dominant pronoun in your proposal should be you by you you are referring to the clients and you talk about your proposal should discuss how you help the clients handle the project with proof that you can actually help the clients handle the project and this is the result you get by handling the project so in the next slide I tell you that your proposal should have this five features it should be solution based it should make a big promise it should be clear and concise clear and concise because it should be concise because some people just write proposals and you, if you ever take the time to read it as a client you don't even really know what the person is promising you at the end of the day it just talks about so many things do you get you get so excited and you talk i don't even think most clients will go through all that all that stress but sometimes i go through all that stress maybe when i read um from my students or something like that but if i were a client and um, trying to hire somebody i wouldn't go through all that stress so your proposal should be concise it should have evidence of what qualifies you to handle the project do you get remember i talked about evidence and when i was discussing your portfolio section and i told you it's important to have samples because it helps you when you're writing proposals because it's easier to convince someone to give you a job because you've done that type of job before and when mm -hmm. you want to use the person's job as the first or as an um, example of what you can do then cta cta means call to action so now if you read this proposal i wrote mm, now the first picture to the left is is um the client's job description the client's job post so you say them um, i'm looking for badass writers who um who want to help build an up and coming blog for entrepreneurs blah 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 now there's so many things proposal writing is is like i think i handled proposal writing in one or two days in my class because i have a paid class where i discuss more of all these things you get i break it down discuss mindset hacks for freelancers discuss proposal writing discuss your se sections of your portfolio of your profile different things do you get and i go on to even discuss a lot more proposal writing than just this um two slides i've discussed so far so one thing i should mention is when you're writing your proposal mm, first thing you have to keep in mind is that you're you're writing to a human being it's a human being that posted this job so you're writing to a human being because some proposals are just so mechanical they're just so as if you're writing to a robot do you get no empathy no human touch no no feeling attached to the proposal your proposal shouldn't be that way so one thing you should also do while writing your proposal is observe client's tone do you get i did not write on the previous slide but these are like other things observe client's tone now in my proposal you see i said hi alex 
You need a writer with the right blend of seriousness and fun to write your articles that are engaging and persuasive. Now, remember I also told you guys that it's important to make a promise. So I've, I've indirectly just told this guy that the articles are right, be engaging and persuasive. And I was able to come up with this because I read the job description and if you check the link, the link, I observed the tone of the articles written on this blog that this is why i'm broke blog.com i observed the tone of the articles written then i found out that they were fun but they're also serious they get so that's why i said the right blend of seriousness and fun then i told him i'm that badass writer you need he used the word badass i wouldn't have used the word badass if he did not use the word badass or if i was writing to a client that i perceived to be very professional it's not like this client wasn't professional. He's professional, but I mean, had the blend of seriousness and fun. That's why I also use the word badass. So I, I said, I read the articles on the link you shared. Now, why I wrote this or why I let him know this is because he shared the link. And definitely he shared the link because he wants me to read it or to read the, the stories there. So it's important that when you read a job description, you should let the clients know that you have read the job description. There are different ways of doing this. You can write something like, um, you can reiterate or re say what the person wants you to do in a different way. Do you get? So I told him I read the articles on the link you shared, and I know I can write even better. And I said, I've attached two samples of my previous works to prove this to you. Do you get? I hope you're following me. It's, I, I did not stop at telling him I can write better. I also went on to tell him, like, see what I have written. This is proof that I can write better than these other guys that you have or that you're trying to model. And I said, I am super confident. Now, your proposal should, you should sound confident in your proposal. Should get. And because, in fact, the first step before you, we even jump into this proposal writing is before you sign up for a job, so rather before you submit a proposal for a job, Make sure it's a job you can handle. If I didn't feel like I can handle this job, I wouldn't I wouldn't submit a proposal for it. I would just move on with my life and look for other jobs that can I feel like I can handle. But I told this guy, I'm super confident that my skills and experience as a copywriter will persuade readers to invest in your offers. Now, I don't want to go into breaking down this um, proposal because I also like added my copywriting knowledge in writing this proposal. Dig it. Now I told him invest. I know I use the word invest. I did not use the word buy. But let's just move on. I said I'm super confident that my skills and experience as a copywriter will persuade readers to invest in your offers while they are hooked by the conversational flow of the article. Let me help you make those dollars roll into your account even while you sleep. Now I observed his site. His site is um, an e-commerce store. Dig get Now I would also advise you when you're writing a proposal, you have to Think beyond what is written. Do you get? Now, if you read this whole article, there's no place he told me anything about trying to make money. Mm? That he wants to use to make money. But the thing is, he he has an affiliate. His site is an affiliate marketing site. And the thing with affiliate marketing is, you're you're writing articles so that then those articles can fetch you money. Do you get? So that was why I told him, let me help you make those dollars roll into your account even while you sleep. For some for some um jobs as a writer for example i know you you could be a graphic designer or whatever so i'm just discussing writing because that's what i do so, for so some jobs as a writer it could be you may be just be there to write an informative post it's not like the post to bring in money or it's supposed to be a direct means of making money but you should let you understand that okay whatever it is you're doing if you think your client's primary aim is to make money or to inform or to educate you should be able to know even without being told and you know these things by observing or by knowing what the job is about do you get then i say kind regards mj and i also wrote ps another promise when i write for you you will discover that i always deliver before a deadline so i compromise on the expected quality of the work now this proposal is just like five paragraphs one two three four five Okay, let's say six, including the PS. He just has six paragraphs. It's clear, it's concise. Once you read it, you know what I'm about. Do you get? I do not go on rambling and rambling and rambling. So yes. So eventually he reached out to me and was like, Hi MJ, 
thanks for your application out of all the applications only four people stuck out from the crowd and you are definitely one of them and we go on and on and then we eventually work together so yes now as i told you guys earlier I told you guys earlier i host a class on upwork and i discuss a lot in class you get i discuss a lot that influences your mindset as a freelancer in the first place actually the very first thing i discussed in my class is mindset mindset hack for freelancers and i know and i discussed this first because that was what helped um, gave me my break when i wanted to start freelancing because some of you have seen people making money online but you do not yet believe it can be a reality do you get and it's difficult to manifest what you do not believe in it's difficult to it's not see it's not motivational speech do you get i'm sure you, you must have heard that your mind is everything your mind is where you build everything and you think it's motivational speech but it's not motivational speech if you do not conceive something in your heart even if you see it in your hand it's not last in your hand because it's going to be like a mistake it's going to be like ah this one misrode because your mind does not accept it it's just like gamblers and the rest they make a shit ton of money and because they have not built the capacity to take care of that money they spend the money till it's like they're back to zero do you get so it's the same thing with anything if you want something to manifest in your life your mindset has to just adjust or expand or whatever the word it says it has to be able to accommodate it so the first thing i discussed in class is mindset then i also discussed business of copywriting so in the previous proposal in the proposal i shared with you guys i told you that i used my copyright my knowledge of copywriting to write that proposal to you get so i discussed basics of copywriting disclaimer please i'm not telling you that when i attend my class you become a copywriter or something like that i do not teach copywriting that's why i told you you should have a skill already you have to sell it could be writing it could be coding it could be graphic design it could be whatever but whatever it is you're selling you need to have even if it's basic knowledge of copywriting and that is why i discuss it in class and i'm not discussing copywriting so that after my class you can become a copywriter no you can still go and learn on your own yes but i'm not telling you that after my class you become a copywriter so that is claim i'm trying to make here and another thing i discuss is setting the foundational the right foundation as a freelancer how to pick a profitable niche so i also discussed like okay these are the things you consider when you're picking a niche how to create an optimized upwork profile but optimized i mean even for search engine they get like to increase the chances of being found then how to write job winning proposals with templates now the importance of having this um, templates for proposal writing is that as I said earlier, you're not the only person seeing a job when it is posted. There are thousands of other freelancers seeing it. Now, Upwork is accessible to 180 countries. It's a global platform. It's not an African-owned thing or for just US citizens or something. It is a global platform. People from over 180 countries have access to this platform so you can already imagine that as you are seeing a job in nigeria another person is seeing it in ghana seeing it in kotonu seeing it in us france uk canada london everywhere as far as they are online or going scrolling through their job feed at the time so you need a template a template is something you can just model and modify in like three four five um three minutes you should have written your proposal in like three minutes if you have a template that is that works you get and the importance of, of submitting your proposals early or being among the first five at least is that clients view proposals according to how they are sent you get so if you jump on the, if you see a job and you're you're seeing like 10 proposals already or even five and um, just move on because before you can even finish writing your proposal you may you may by the time you're submitting you may start seeing like 15 to 20 proposals already on the job they get and if you were a client i mean if you're going through the proposals according to how they're submitted once you see the person you want there's really no need to going through the remaining 20 or 50 proposals so you need a template and i share a template in my class i also show how i 
also show, share another sample that is different from this one on how I applied that template while writing the job proposal and I got the work they get. I got the job, I got the contract or whatever. Another thing I also discuss is factors to consider before applying for the job. I already discussed one of them here and that was like if you have if you see like so many proposals already you should just move on. There's so many other factors to consider before applying. There are not so many, so many, but I discussed like eight other factors to consider before applying for a job in class. I also discuss factors to optimizing your social media accounts for visibility. So even aside your upwork um platform also discuss how to optimize your other platforms like um your facebook and the rest for visibility because whatever your job it is that you're doing as a freelancer your clients are everywhere they get but you should also find ways to attract them to you and how you optimize your accounts how you set up your um, social media accounts and your upwork profile are wonderful ways of getting the right people to you then as bonus, I share a material on Fiverr, how to create optimized gigs, and some ebooks on copywriting to get you started on copywriting in case that is something you want to explore in the future or even just for yourself. You get how to get in. I don't know. I'm ashamed. I'm usually ashamed to tell people that the fee for my class is 3 5 because it is ridiculously cheap. I mean, but the reason i set my fee at three five is that i understand the pain of for most people you get and the shoes most people are in right now is the shoe i was in about a year ago plus you get and i understand that oh so, so many people are just i mean no jobs no this one no that one but if i were to set the fee for my class and at at something close to the valid offers to definitely not be anything less than thank you and of course you don't have to take my word for it i know it's my class you feel how hype it yes i'll hype it because it's worth it but i asked my students one time i wasn't in the middle of the class this was like i think on a wednesday on a thursday and i was like okay with the value of what you've gotten what you still get how much should this class be and they were telling me thank you will not be much they even know people that are charging 20k for the same thing I'm teaching and they're not even teaching everything I'm teaching you get and when apart from just what I teach when you consider how much money you can make with it I know someone that said if so many testimonies so many so many testimonies one babe was like she don't she doesn't even know how she would have admitted her father in the hospital when her father fell sick if she did not attend my class and start learning how to earn in dollars so this one says so many i've gotten so many amazing testimonies that are even beyond my expectations beyond my what i imagined my class would be helping people achieve do you get so if you are willing to make this investment in yourself and i mean in a month if you apply the principles i teach and so there is parables you should be able to make at least a hundred thousand naira every day and um, every month every month please from the comfort of your home you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to spend extra money on maybe transportation or this one or that one upwork is something it's some is a remote job experience it's something that gives you a, 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 is remote working so from your home you can cut out all the money on spending on for transports maybe going to your place of work and then even somewhere like lagos where or lagos or not just lagos lagos abuja so many expensive places in this country that from point a to point b that could be like just a stone throw away you already spend like 100 naira 200 naira you can imagine how much all that money will save you in a month with what you learn in my class so yes for my class is three five now as you're listening to Today's date is like I think nineteenth of May. Yes. So in case you come like next two weeks, next three weeks, and you find out that there's no more three five, just on that this was probably a limited opportunity, a time limited opportunity. So in like it can increase any time because I know the value of what I am giving out and I know it is way, way, way higher than three five. Even that 10k self is even higher than 10k because this was 
sometime last year this was 2020 this is 2021 i have added a whole lot to the class so i'm sure if i ask the question again i'll be getting like 15k 20k but yes let's just leave it at 35 people my class is 35 i'll attach the link to my seller account so you can see more of what i discuss in class and you can sign up for it remember if you have any questions of what i've discussed so far or what other things i discuss in class you hit me up in the comment section as an extra i'll also be sharing a link to how to pick a niche sorry no not how to pick a niche how to create um, relevant work samples i'll also be sharing that link in the um description box below this video so do well thank you so much guys for watching this video and i hope you got so much value from this particular video today now this lady has really shared with you everything that you need to know and how to get started and also how to become super successful now if you actually need more guide and mentorship i'm going to leave a link to get access to her program right down there in the description section below so that you can actually assess this and start doing a whole lot more for yourself now the thing is it's really okay to start but on the long run you get to realize that you need someone to mentor you you need a coach who is already successful in the field to guide you and walk you through the step-by-step -step process and hold you all through the way and this is exactly why she has actually you know left those links down there so that i can actually reach out to her and jump on her mentorship program and she can actually walk you through and guide you to when you can start making cool cash from upwork now if you love this video go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this channel right now and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of my videos and this is actually one of so many other make money online videos videos that I'm actually going to share with you guys because my goal here is to be sharing with you guys a series of content that would help you guys make money using your laptop, your mobile phone and your internet assets. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video. Peace.